Hey everybody, Melissa here. So I was asked if there is a workaround in LibreOffice Calc for Excel's VLOOKUP. Well, the great news is, is LibreOffice Calc has its own version of VLOOKUP and it's just as powerful. I cannot wait to show you how this works. So let's go ahead and get started. So before we get started, let me quickly explain what VLOOKUP means. So VLOOKUP stands for Vertical Lookup. So basically, we're going to tell it to look in a certain column from top to bottom and return something in another column based on what we've asked it to search for. So this is the data that we're going to use to do our VLOOKUP. We have somewhere between 125 and 130 different fruit types. And if you notice in column M, N and O, we have fruit, quantity, and amount. And the fruit column is what we're going to ask it to look for. So apple, blueberry, and cranberry. We're going to ask it to return the quantity, return the dollar amount. So there's a couple of ways we can go about this. We can enter our function directly into the cell, or we can do it through the function wizard. I'm going to show you both ways so that you have an understanding and you can decide which one's best for you. So from the function wizard, if we click on it, we can search for VLOOKUP, select it, tell it next. Now our search criterion is going to be, what are we looking for? Well, we're looking for Apple. Our array is, where are we looking? So here's where it gets a little bit tricky with a VLOOKUP. You would think that you could highlight this whole table and tell it, look in here. Well, we can't do that. We can only give it a couple of columns to look in. So what we're going to do, let me get this out of the way, is I'm going to start with column I, which has my item description. And I'm going to highlight it and the quantity, because we're returning the quantity. So let's select it, come over, come down, till we reach the bottom. And I went way too far. <laughs> make sure we have the quantity. Now, one thing I need to point out is make sure you do not include your column headers. I have done that before and it will not work. The next thing we're going to look at is the index. The index is what am I returning? Well, we're going to return the quantity associated with Apple. Now we're going to put this in as a column name, which can be kind of confusing because you would want to put J. Well, that's not what we're going to put here. We're going to put column two. Now you can say, well, Melissa, that's like column 10 or column 11, or column whatever, why are we doing two? So when we put the column number in the index, it is the column number from the selection that we have made. So we've selected item description and quantity, so it is column one, two, okay? So it's column two. If we had five of these selected, it would be column five, but in this case, it's column two. So we're gonna put the number two. Our sorted range lookup, is kind of a little bit confusing in LibreOffice versus Excel because basically what this is going to be is a zero or a one or it's going to be a true or a false. Now the difference between those two is if you choose true it's going to do the closest match and that's not what we want to do in most VLOOKUPs. What false means is we want an exact match. To break this down a little bit more if we had a fruit over here that said cran apple. I don't even know if that's a, a thing, but if we had something over here that said cran apple and we did true searching for apple, it might pull that cran apple because it is a close match. If we tell it false, which is an exact match and it finds cran apple, it's gonna go, nope, because of that's more than apple. So that's not what we're going to pull and it's gonna keep looking for apple and apple only. So we're gonna put false. And just so you know, the majority of time you're going to put false when you're doing a VLOOKUP. There are some cases that I might cover a little bit later where you might want to put true, but I would say probably 90% of the time, 95% of the time, you're going to do false. Okay, let's tell it okay. And look what it's done. It's found Apple and it's returned the 200. Now, the beauty of VLOOKUP is we can go ahead and drag this down not enter it each time. And look, let's go to blueberry. Blueberry, 190. Cranberry, 
Where's my cranberry? Cranberry. 340. Okay. Now, let's enter it within the cell itself for the amount so you know how to do it that way as well. So we're going to do equals V lookup and open our parentheses. And if you notice, that's going off the viewable screen. So I'm going to pull this over about like that so that when we come back over here, it shows you what we're doing. There we go. So this is basically the same information we have in our function wizard. The first thing is search criterion, and that is what are we looking for? We're looking for apple. We're going to do a comma. Our array, where are we looking? Now, let's go ahead and highlight item description because we're looking for apple quantity, and this time include the USD or the amount. So let's go ahead and highlight these to select them. Now, one thing we need to do here is we need to hit F4. And if you notice, it puts the dollar sign, dollar sign. So it makes it an absolute cell reference, which you always want to make sure you do in a VLOOKUP. When you use the function wizard, it does that automatically for you. But if you're entering it into the cell yourself, you're going to have to do that. That makes sure that no matter where this data moves, it's not going to blow your VLOOKUP. We're going to do another comma. Then we're going to look at our index, and that is our column number. In this case, we're looking for amount, so it's column one, two, three. So we're going to put our three, comma, and then we're going to put our false, because we want it to look for apple and apple only. Okay, let's hit enter. And now if you look at apple, it's pulled $1,490. We can go ahead and pull that down. And then our blueberry is 2000 and so on. Now let's just say that we want to change apple and we want to look for banana. If you type in banana, it changes it to where it shows banana is 210 and 1380. If we want to change blueberry to let's say breadfruit, then it changes it to 320 and 1700. So now I want to show you how to do a VLOOKUP if your data that you need is in a different worksheet, which can happen. So on our analysis worksheet, you can see we still have the same fruit, quantity, and amount, but all of our other data, what we're looking for is in fruit data. You can do it either via your wizard or manually, and I'm going to show you both ways since we're going from worksheet to worksheet. So let's go up to our function wizard and type in our VLOOKUP and tell it next. Okay, our search criterion is what are we looking for? We're looking for Apple. Our array is where are we looking? Well, we're going to go back over to our fruit data sheet. Let me move this over. And we're looking in item, description, and quantity, because that's what we're looking for. Remember, do not get your headers. Let's go ahead and select those. Now, if you notice here, instead of just having the dollar sign and the column and row number, this actually puts fruit data. Okay. Now we can go on, even though we're pulling to the analysis page, we can do the rest of this from the fruit data or the data page. Our index, what column number, from what we highlighted, we want column two, and then our false. Okay, and you can get a preview of the result here, which is correct, and we're going to tell it OK. Now, if you noticed, it popped us back to our analysis page and it gave us our 200. Pull it down, you get the same results. Blueberry, 190, and so on. So for the amount, I'm going to do this manually to show you that way. We're going to do equal VLOOKUP, open our parentheses. Our search criterion is what are we looking for? We're looking for Apple, our array, where are we looking? Well, we're looking in fruit data. And since we want the amount and the item description, I'm going to select those three columns. Again, be sure not to select your headers. 
I've done that way too many times and be able to tell you it will not work. <laughs> okay. Now, one thing I recommend here, if you notice you have a dollar sign before your fruit data, which is an absolute cell reference, which means no matter where this fruit data worksheet moves, it's going to pull from there and there only. However, our column and row is not an absolute cell reference and we want it to be. So I would recommend highlighting it and doing your F4. Now, if you notice, it's got fruit data and it has those absolute cell references. Do a comma and we're in column one, two, three, and then comma false because we want exactly what we have in here. Close our parentheses and hit enter. If you notice, it took us back over to our analysis sheet and it populated the dollar amount. We can pull it down. And then if we go look at Blueberry, we should have 190 at 2000. Blueberry, 190 at 2000, and so on. Now the same thing applies if it's on a separate worksheet or the same worksheet. If we change this to apricot, if you notice it changed to 170 and 3200. If we go over here to apricot, 170 and 3200. Let's change this one to blood orange. If you noticed it went 220, 1745, our blood orange, 1745 and 220. So one last thing I want to point out is if you ever need to use this data in another worksheet, another workbook or anything like that, make sure that you copy and paste without your function or it can cause you some issues. Now how we're going to do that is select everything, either control C or right click and copy, right click, paste special, paste special again, make sure your formats is checked and tell it okay. If you notice, if you look at Apple 200, you see your VLOOKUP. If you have Apple down here, all you see is the amount. And there you have it. That's how you use VLOOKUP in LibreOffice Calc, just like you would in Excel. If you found this video helpful, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. Drop me a comment if you have any questions, feedback, or ideas for future tutorials. And be sure to hit that subscribe button before you leave. And I'll see you in the next tutorial. Until then, thanks so much for watching.